Dreamland is brought to you by UnknownCountry.com and its family of subscribers. Our theme music is The O of Pleasure by Ray Lynch. Unknown Country was founded by Ann Streber. Our news editor is Matthew Frizzell. Our coordinator is Amy Safrankova. Whitley Streber is your Dreamland host. And I'm your announcer, Ted Alexander. So you have been beautifully set up now, and I'm. I will. We, we will get into the question of that setup in the in the <laughs> third half hour. Uh, now, I think uh, uh, something was happening here that I'm not so sure that Anjali entirely is aware of, but uh, we've discussed it very briefly, and we'll discuss it more at length in the third half hour of the show. And this is, nothing here is really entirely what it seems. Let me put it that way. And that is usually, usually the case with this experience. Um, so Free Dreamlanders, I would like to thank you for staying with us as long as you have. And remind, please, remember please, that this is the only place in the world where this conversation can take place. I have not been uh, going down the road of, did it happen or didn't it happen? Is it true or is it not? Is she crazy or is it not? Was she on drugs or was she not? I don't care about any of that stuff. That's in another level of reality as far as I'm concerned. We're, we're working in this level of reality on this show. And we're going to go a little deeper in just a moment. Free Dreamlanders, thank you so much for being with us. Ex description of what happened once you were physically face to face and inside this uh, state or place, whichever one it was, we don't even know. Right, right. So, you know, I round the corner and they're all standing there um, and, and looking at us. And um, then they greet, they greet me um the the small the small one does over to the right and um and that was um and that was much like what i had been experiencing while i was on the walk to the tunnel where i can physically see everything you know as it is um where i'm walking and then at this and simultaneously i can see something else that is communicating and giving information. So it's not like I, I, I cease to see what's around me on um, that. The, the physical material world as I experience it is still there. And then I have like this overlay. So here, that was like what being in this tunnel was. Um, and um, so they're standing there and then I get the, the overlay of communication and I know that they want me to come with them. And, um, and we go, uh, um, we go into another room after going down a hallway, uh, where I meet, uh, a, the, the tall lavender light purplish being, um, who's, you know, probably over eight feet tall. Um, and, um, <sighs> I, I ended up laying down when this door opened, I I'm, I'm sorry. I'm just get, kind of getting flooded with these memories, but when the door opened, um, there were lots of beings in the room. It wasn't just a few, and this was a very large room. And there was a table that came right up out of the floor. It was just seamlessly just came right up. And, um, and I laid down on it and there was a misty light like if you can imagine mist that's like fine little particles of of actual light instead of being water you know um that's what it was like it was like being in light fog you know um, <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it's it's and, not regular light it's that light has uh, right. got a lot of different properties among other things it can lift you right up off the ground and it lifted me right out of my body is what it did. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, I'm not surprised. It separated, it separated my consciousness right out of my body. 
Um, and, um, but before that, I just wanted to explain the room a little bit because I had mentioned it um, before, but I wanted to clear something up that I don't think that I was inside of a ship at that point, but I was explaining how there's like a bay of windows that, um, that are up like around the top and like part way around this room that I'm in, this large, very cathedral tall room. Okay. Um, and these windows, I, I guess it, I, I had said, I was trying to figure out, am I inside of the ship? I was trying to figure out what was happening. Um, I don't, they weren't windows to the outside. It felt, I mean, they were dark. I couldn't see through them, but it was more like, like a gallery viewing is kind of how it felt mm -hmm. more than being in a ship, but I can't, but that doesn't mean that that's accurate. Yeah, perhaps um, you were in a theater. Something. I, yeah. I wasn't the only one. <sighs> There were other tables and I just can't quite put my finger on it. Um, but I, I'm, I'm fairly certain that I wasn't the only one um, such as myself who may have been in the room. Um, I have vague recollections that are just like, they teeter right there on the edge of, of, of my memory. But um, there were a number of these intelligent, highly compassionate, advanced beings that were in this room. Um, and they, I was being communicated with that, you know, that they, they, um, you know, what they were doing and that it, it felt like in a medical evaluation, um, as well as a spiritual one. Um, and, uh, it was a, a remarkable experience. And, what people the i think the hardest part and i know that that sounds like that would be the hardest part for everyone to accept right that that any of this actually physically happened to me um but uh like I, this was definitely a physical room that i was in but i don't know where that room was well you know like, what know. we have in, in our it, oh go ahead no i just like in time space Dement like I have no idea. All I can right. tell you is how I got to that room. In our world, we can go anywhere instantaneously using the internet, but we can't do that physically. There will come a time when the physical experience is the same as what we now have as an electronic experience if, this, if the planet survives long enough. And what you were experiencing was what life is like in a more advanced level, I would think, where mm -hmm. physical movement is as instantaneous, instantaneous and ambiguous as electronic movement is for us. So you and I are here instantaneously side by side uh, over the internet and our listeners and my viewers are watching and listening uh, instantaneously all over the world, but there will come a time when that kind of activity can be physical or appear to be physical. Yeah. And uh, we already have, we're moving in the direction of virtual reality, and that is going to go down a long path. And at the end of that path is a world very much like the one you're describing, where you really can't tell where you are or where anybody else is, or whether they're or not, they are even real in some absolute sense That's in right. their in your physical presence, or what they are. For example, this tall mm. violet being walked right out of an ayahuasca experience, but you're not an ayahuasca. You don't mm -hmm. take drugs. You, you no. with your health situation, you you say you don't, and I believe you. Yeah. So here we are. What do they ask you to do? To remember that I came here um, with a purpose and um, that I have a job to do. To remember who I am and to encourage others to remember who they are. Um, 
it, it took me took me some time to uh, to work through a lot of this. Um, the contact with them hasn't ceased the the conscious communication that I received from them. They told me that day that that I could, how did they say it? Um, that I could always reach out to them and that we had we had just like a, a live connection was kind of how they, they showed it. Um, that as long as I wanted and initiated it, um, that it could that it could occur. And so um, what I have what I have learned is that they have messages that they want to give to humanity. And they need a vessel to deliver that message through. And they say that this is my my role this is what i do that i go through consciousness in various places as it is developing and when we when it is coming towards the end of a cycle of birth and rebirth that has been created specifically for sensory perception learning and growth through experience, through experience, to develop consciousness, consciousness that wants to think of itself as Whitley and Anjali. But the truth is that Anjali and Whitley are simply expressions of one consciousness. And they want us to remember that. We are explorers in the stream of time all That's of right. us. That's exactly what we are. Now, uh, mm. something makes you decide to hold a press conference on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. What caused right. you to decide to do that? Ongoing, persistent communication um, through meditation and conscious communication with the beings that they wanted to push consciousness awakening and they needed to push disclosure to cause a conscious awakening in humanity uh, because we are coming to the end of this cycle and that we are going to experience changes that they want to um, explain and they want to help us prepare for uh, they want consciousness to understand what is happening um, and um, and i have agreed to explain that for them. Um, and so the Lincoln Memorial was, was chosen through communication with them. Um, and it was not simply a statement, a public statement to um, the general population. It was, I was more making sure that the message was heard by those in Washington, D.C. who understood the alphabet soup that I was spilling about my professional um, Yes, this is, this is a big part of it, I think, because yes. there is no way that there are not going to be elements in the intelligence community who suddenly a former and a, a, a DIA agent with a, or officer, I should say, with a, uh, an extensive resume and a solid resume, ends up on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial announcing that aliens are short and coming. That's going to be noticed immediately. And <laughs> whoever put you there and convinced you to go there knew it. And yes. I think part of the purpose was this, to test the waters, to see... Yes what their reaction was That's and right. would they be comfortable with this happening or not? And then things immediately begin to go south. You mentioned a particular date, December the 21st, uh, not knowing that 
there was another, but, but there will were people who heard you who did know this. There was mm -hmm. another massive attempt at communication with mankind that happened on another solstice in 1952, starting on June the 21st, 1952, the, the so-called, what developed into what is known as the uh, flyovers, the uh, uh, Washington flyovers, that that began on that day, not the flyovers, but the beginning of the flyover process. And this flyover process evolved over the next few months in ways that the public does not know. But there, but there's it's not secret, and I can I can go into great detail about it. And in fact, I'm working on a book that will have a lot of detail about it. In any case, suffice to say, it was an attempt at communication. And it failed. This was, I think, too. I don't know whether you went into a cave in the Mojave or not. I wasn't there. I can't say. I know that you believe you did, and I think it's possible that it may have happened. Uh, what, what the degree of physicality that you experienced in that cave is unknown to me. But That's I do right. know this: in a sense, you were had, you were used. And the attempt was to find out whether or not this community, which is already beginning to loosen up a little bit, was loose That's enough right. to do this. That's right. Their habit always is to come too early. <clears throat> they did that in my life. They, they offered me a chance to go with them and be with them too early. <laughs> And they knew it was too early. They knew I wouldn't succeed. And they knew the intelligence community wouldn't succeed either. But it is a notice that this is available and it means a step forward has been taken. And you were a part of that. Whatever and, yeah. it inspired you to end up on the Lincoln Memorial making these claims, I will That's never right. know and I don't know, but I do know this. It was a very legitimate and noble effort that you made because you must have known the trouble it was going to cause you. And you're scared they, to fly. You even drove there from all the way from what in South Dakota or somewhere. Yes. Um, I, you know, I, I was very aware. They were constantly telling me um, that this, that what was the most important about the entire process was soft disclosure. That's how they kept explaining it. They kept saying, you know, like how I can only interpret it as, as soft disclosure, which yeah, and be, on this show, that's what's happening. We are engaged in a process right. of moving of soft, soft disclosure forward yes. right now. There, yes, they were saying that it would be a catalyst for soft disclosure, and that soft disclosure. And I have said this from uh, from the beginning when I first came out about this: that soft disclosure must pre precede precede physical contact. We must prepare our consciousnesses for such an event. We must be prepared, and they are always evaluating. The situation in each moment we are are choosing and they are reevaluating um there is an inevitability they they insist there is an inevitability um that uh as as they as they say whitley as the veil falls so does the illusion yeah, yeah. What, and that it is inevitable now yeah. I would What's like to, to oh, I would like to go on to a conversation that we had, uh, where we were going back and forth talking about the the spiritual journey, and you began to channel. I could see it in your face, and you said something that is of critical importance, uh, that is fundamental to making this work. I don't know if you, you probably don't re remember what it was, but I will tell you what it was. You spoke of the difference between polarity and mm. you remember that? You do remember it. Mm. Sort of. I okay. Can um, difference. <laughs> well, but, but basically between looking at 
polarity and duality. Uh, duality is the yes and the no. Uh, yes, she's a liar. No, she's not. Uh, yes, he's evil. No, he's not. Yes, this political party is right. No, this political party is right. That's the yes and the no. That's where the human species lives right now. But you spoke instead of another level, which is the level of polarity. Mm -hmm. This is where we need to go. In polarity, it's not, yes, this one is evil. No, that one is not. It mm -hmm. is a process instead of analyzing the energies objectively and using them. This is how species at another, the next level of being function. They don't look at it in terms of the good guys versus the bad guys. They look at it in terms of how do we use this energy? How do we use that energy? And at the bottom pole is absolute entropy, absolute silence, motionlessness. But the interesting thing about the upper pole is it goes on forever and becomes more and more deeply engaged in the joy of creation. That's what you were talking about on that day without, I think, Absolutely. fully realizing it. But you may have known more. I'm not, I don't want to, you may have known a great deal. Um, so. I, yeah, I do remember. I do remember a little bit about that. Yes. It was a very nice conversation with Lee. Yeah, it was. I remember it very fondly. How interesting that a, a player in this has just tried to call me, even though we're, we're he doesn't know I'm talking to you right now. It's Alan Steinfeld. I'll have to ask him <laughs> afterwards why he decided to call me just at this moment. How do you know well, Alan? How did he come into your life? I was um, I was invited on to extraterrestrial evidence to get of a clubhouse interview. It was my very yep. first interview and he um, lives on clubhouse yes that's right and so um he was on the panel of speakers he jumped on and and we he introduced himself to me that night and roderick asked him roderick martin um who is a fine gentleman he asked me if it was okay if he gave alan my contact info and the rest is history so yeah Okay, and Jolly, we have j just a few minutes left. Uh, we've got about no ten minutes, say. And okay. what I would like you to do now, if you will, uh, I can continue to ask questions, but I sense that there's a lot that you'd like to say that you haven't said, that has come <clears throat> to you that you've wished that you could say. And it's time now, if there is something you would like to say that I haven't asked about, or have touched on and moved off. It's time for us to talk about that. Sure, sure. I loved when you said entropy. Um, entropy is such an interesting topic, um, interesting concept, because it invites creative destruction. Um, in order for consciousness to have a new experience and to continue to, to grow and expand, um, it must start somewhere, you know? And so each, each cycle that each level, they say, of consciousness development is it's it is a they say it is the choice that we make um to there's a choice that we make in order for us to have a new experience and to learn something new about ourselves and to decide each of us what we're going to do with this new part um, that we have discovered in this new individual expression 
that we are each taking on as part of the whole source. And so our part of our duty here, our, yes, our duty to consciousness, to consciousness growth is to separate internally within our own expressions, what is useful to the whole and what is destructive. Yes, exactly. This is the journey. And this is also the energetic journey because this is what, when you spoke about us being in the time stream and being in bodies, this is the energy that we're seeking here. It's that's this right. precise energy. And um, so uh, that's why I always say on my show and in my on my site, we're, we don't do politics here. And we don't do politics because politics is bound by the yes and the no. There are really right. only two political issues, uh, balancing the need for community against the need for liberty. And they have nothing to do with ideology or anything like that. They're simply technology, if you will, spiritual technology, but we don't rec recognize that. And so we have all of these political systems that are essentially meaningless. Now, I would like to go back briefly to about 1990 when we received a letter. In this letter, it mentions that the pole of the planet, axis of the planet would shift in the year 2027. And now you have been speaking about something in the year 2029. I know it, you look surprised. Oh. But... No, 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 no. I'm speak. They have said 2027. Well, they did. 2027. What, what, what letter? What are you talking about? Oh, with... the among the communion letters. It's among the communion okay. letters that we got from the public. Okay. Okay. Okay, go ahead. I'm so sorry. No, that's okay. So what did what have you heard about this year? They have they they named 2027 as the most likely year that will be the end of this cycle of birth and rebirth. The end of what they have have helped to understand is our con is consciousness development in the physical material expression, um, and that there's going to be massive changes that occur to the earth in preparation for the next like dex density of life to emerge here and that to be to be quite frank they they say that we are going to have a tumultuous overturning of the earth and it will not be hab habitable for some for some time um and that this is this is a natural process this yeah, is nothing to be of. This is just how it is. This was when, always meant to be impermanent. When you when alluded to it earlier, you said that they had said it's not our fault, and it's important to remember That's, that. Right. Uh, will it happen or not? Well, let's let's all pray that 2027 is a fantastically uninteresting year, <laughs> because because we have had these predictions many times in our history, going all the way back, goodness knows, to biblical days. And they've essentially never happened. That's right. Who knows whether this one will or not? Uh, who knows? Now, I'm not sure you were aware that the journey of the Pharaoh after his death was intended to return to Orion from which he had come. And this yeah. is the this is the journey of the Pharaoh. Can you tell us about your association with Orion? Um I I didn't know that. Um I am learning <laughs> no, you didn't know it. 
I, I'm, I'm this last just few minutes. I'm, I'm so stunned right now. You've dropped huge bombs on me. I just don't even <laughs> kind of reel in here. Um, they say that my consciousness developed and evolved in Orion in, in the Orion constellation. Yes, I'm very aware that Orion is not a place or is not a planet um, that we are aware of. Um, but they say that that's, that is where this consciousness that you see expressing itself right now in this physical body actually evolved. Um, and that um, I am uh, at a point where I have to um, serve consciousness now. That's um, my, that's the path that I have chosen. And um, part of that is to accept um, uncomfortable tasks such as this. Yeah, and, I, I know the feeling, <laughs> believe me. And so um, I, uh, I embrace it wholly. I am, I'm so thankful for uh, the incredible transformation that I have experienced in my, my own life. And um, it has enriched every day that I have had since. Um, every day i i choose to to continue on this path that i'm on and um i uh i couldn't be more grateful for that angela schultz on the journey now with the rest of us <laughs> in the close encounter experience and everyone on the planet earth and beyond what a journey it is goodness knows where it will lead us or where we really go when we step into the mysteries of the night. Thank you so much for being with us on Dreamland. Thank you so much. I'm very grateful for your time. You've been listening to Dreamland. Be sure to tune in again next week. Dreamland is brought to you by unknowncountry.com and its family of subscribers. Our theme music is The O of Pleasure by Ray Lynch. Unknown Country was founded by Ann Streber. Our news editor is Matthew Frizzell. Our coordinator is Amy Safrankova. Whitley Streber is your Dreamland host. And I'm your announcer.